Shri Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada and your lotus feet. Uh, Maharaj, today we will go ahead and we will study from Canto 5, Chapter 26, Verse Number 21. Whenever you're ready, Maharaj, you can take the call over. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. My obeisance is to all the devotees. What is the this chapter is entitled Hellish Planets, right? I think. Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so uh Magyant Mirandasya Ginajana Sulakya. Taksum Rita Minatas May Sri Gurveda Maha, Mam Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prasdaya Bhutale, Shimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine, Namaste Saraswati Deve, Gauravani Pacharine, Namase Sasunyavani Paschatya De Satarne, Panchakopa, Kuru Vishakri Pasunda Be, Vajapakitanam, Pavane Byo, Vaishnavi Byo, Mahoma Maha. Jai Sri Krishna, Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadar Har, Srivasani Gaur, Bhaktivinam, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So, this continuation of the chapter, Polish Planets, this is verse number 21. And so, um, this is the prose, so we don't usually chant the prose. What we do in classes is that we do the synonyms when there's only prose, but that requires response from the listening audience. So I don't know if we can do that or not. But if we can't do the synonyms in a responsive way, I can just read the synonyms, synonyms, and you can go from there. Ya, anyone who, to, but, iha, in this life, vai, indeed, sarva abhigama, indulges in sex life indiscriminately with both men and animals, tam, him, Amutra, in the next life, Niraye, in the hell, Vartamanam, existing, Rajakantaka Salmalim, a silk cotton tree with thorns like thunderbolts, Adropya, mounting him on, Niskarsanti, they pull him out. <laughs> Translation, a person who indulges in sex indiscriminately, even with animals, is taken after death to the hell known as Rajakantaka Salmali. In this hell, there is a silk cotton tree full of thorns as strong as thunderbolts. The agents of Yamaraj hang the sinful man on the tree and pull him down forcefully so that the thorns very severely tear his body per part. The sexual urge is so strong that sometimes a man indulges in sexual relationships with a cow, or a woman indulges in sexual relationships with a dog. Such men and women are put into the hell known as Rajakantaka Salmali. The Krishna consciousness movement forbids illicit sex. In the description of this verse, from these verses, we can understand what an extremely sinful act illicit sex is. Sometimes people disbelieve these descriptions of hell, but whether one disbelieves it or not, everything must be carried out by the laws of nature, which no one can avoid. So there are 28 different hells. 
And here, this one here, you can keep the verse up for a few minutes here. This one is called uh, Rajakantaka Salmali. And in this, ver in this particular hell, uh, the punishment is described. So um, people uh, do not know that they're responsible for their activities. So everything is being judged by the material energy, which is Krishna's energy. So one who follows the laws of God, who automatically fall, follows the laws of material nature. So laws must be followed, rules must be followed. Um, just like if you remember a particular state or country or even society, even club, group, there is a governing set of rules and regulations on how things should go on. And so if one follows that, they're considered to be a good citizen, proper member of the group. And if they create their own laws or rules and break the established ones, they're considered to be deviant and then they'll either be thrown out of the group or they get punished in order for them to be corrected. So here we see how when people indiscriminately without any, um, what we say, uh, what's the word? Uh, yeah, yeah, the word indiscriminately without any uh, intelligence, you know, it acts simply like an animal because the, the four animal propensities uh, of the body, which the human beings also inhabit. In other words, the animals eat, we eat. The animals sleep, we also sleep. The animals have sex. The human society also does that for creation of children. And the uh, animal society also defends themselves in different ways with nails, claws, teeth, and various other things given by God. And the human society also develops a great amount of arrangements for defense, locks on doors, um, armaments, um, the biggest budget spent in most countries is the defense budget because the fear of propensity is so strong. Fear that they will lose their, uh, or they have their eating, sleeping, and mating the, the, uh, challenged or destroyed, and therefore uh, defense is there. Uh, here, Prabhupada, after describing very succinctly what happens in this particular how? Prabhupada ends by saying, some people will believe these and some people will not. He doesn't go on any farther. He says, everything must be carried out by the laws of nature, which no one can avoid. Karnam guna sangha so so sajami janmasu. Its material energy is both the provider and the punisher of the living entity. Under the guise and under the guidance of God's direction, through the material energy, the material energy works to give people the results of their activities. Just like now we are in, we just came out of, maybe we didn't come out completely, or in some places they didn't still haven't come out of this uh, this epidemic of coronavirus. And so these these epidemics or viruses spread due to the sinful activities of the population. So this is, this is an indication of a reaction, at least on the immediate level. And of course, after one dies, if doesn't, one doesn't atone for these sinful activities, then they have to again undergo punishment by Yamaraj who employs uh, very fierce personalities in his service 
to met out the punishment of the living entities. So I'm seeing, I, I, I imagine you've been going through this chapter uh, verse by verse and hearing of the different punishments. So some people will think, well, this is just some eulogy, some hyperbole, some imagination in order to um, scare people from into, into following the rules and regulations. But these things are not imagination. But what level does this happen on? This happens on the subtle level. So, you, because if you read the descriptions of the, the punishments and how the living entity has to go through them, you wonder how, how come they don't die in the midst of all of this? Because it happens on the subtle level. Just like when you go into a dream state, you also, you actually function on another level and you also suffer and joy in the dream. And sometimes there's even physical symptoms in the dream. When one will, you know, in the embrace the beautiful girl in the dream and there'll be some kind of discharge. Yeah, so that happens on the subtle level, but the activity sometimes manifests on the gross level. Well, sometimes people have such terrible dreams, they actually die out of fear in the dream. So um, these things are uh, there because it, this is the nature of the material energy. So for devotees, Prabhupada has given us the standard for no illicit sex, no intoxication, no meat eating, no gambling. These are called the four pillars of sinful activity. And one who adheres by restricting themselves from these four can practice Krishna consciousness, what we say, progressively. Uh, if one is not following these four, and each one requires a uh, explanation, there's a nice little book that was released by um, the devotee called Satyaraj. He's, he's quite a prolific author. He's written over close to 40 books. And he uh, takes each one of these uh, sinful activities, illicit sex, intoxication, mediating gamble, and explains them in a more detailed way from different angles of vision. So we get a lot of broader understanding of what it is and what are the reactions are. But most important, how, it, how important it is to avoid these things. When one takes initiation from the spiritual master and agrees to uh, distance themselves from these four sinful activities, um, then they make a vow in front of the spiritual master, in front of the fire, which is represented as Vishnu, and the assembly of Vaishnavas who are personally there. And of course, uh, uh, Guru, Vaishnavas, fire, and the Supreme Lord who exists within the hearts of all of the entities. And so, um, and if one does not keep their vows of restricting themselves from these four, then one commits sinful activities and one falls down in devotional service. So breaking these four means you fall down. Um, if we neglect to chant our rounds, we don't fall down, but we don't gain any special, we don't, we don't make any, any advancement in devotional service if we don't chant our rounds. And if we continue to not chant our rounds, then, or if we continue to fall below the promised vow of 16 rounds at the time of initiation, then uh, we will eventually start going back to material life again. Because Krishna's name protects us along with elevating us in Krishna consciousness. 
But these four prohibitions, sometimes they're called items of knowledge um, because they uh, stabilize one's execution of devotional service where one is free from the reactions of sinful activities. When one comes to Krishna consciousness, one still has the re results of one's sinful activities still hanging in the balance. The spiritual master will take the reactions of those sinful activities partially on the first initiation and second, uh, completely on the second initiation in order for the disciple to execute devotional service progressively and uh, steadily. But if one goes back to performing these activities, then one again is building up their sinful karma. And both the spiritual master and the disciple get a reaction for that. The spiritual master has to make sure his disciples follow very strictly these four. Otherwise, he also suffers the reactions. This suffering is not like, uh, it's just this, that the spiritual master will get bad dreams. The spiritual master will get sick. All of this is due to the disciples who promise to follow these four principles, then break them, and then the spiritual master gets some reaction also. So we say if you have any love for your spiritual master, then very carefully follow these four principles. Illicit sex means in marriage only for the procreation of children, and Fa Prabhupada gives the formula. This, this, uh, this desire to enjoy the opposite sex through these activities of sexual sex life is actually uh, the foundation for all sinful activities. If one can very carefully and very uh, consciously avoid uh, illicit sex, and also follow very strictly the principles that one can make very fast advancement in Krishna consciousness. Um, here we see how strong the sex urge is. It's mentioned here, and it's so strong that it's even, it goes outside of the human uh, species where the humans will engage with animals. There's places in uh, Mexico where they put on performances like that, where uh, a lady will have sex with a dog or an animal in, on stage and people will come and watch that. So you can see it's just how degraded the human culture can become in such, and by acting almost, not even the animals will not even act like that. The animals follow the laws of material nature very carefully. But the human being has its what we call uh, independence. And the human, the human being can misuse the independence and become lower than an animal. Here is the example. Now they become lower than an animal, not just in, they act like animals, but it's even lower than the animal because the animals will not act like this. And so here, you see the punishment is very strong. And the agents of Yamaraj pull the person down on this very silky tree that has big, gigantic thorns that, are, that will rip the body of the person as they, as, they, as they glide down this tree. So you can imagine how much suffering that is. And, and so, these, uh, you know, Maharaj Pariksha is hearing from Sukadeva Goswami the descriptions of this hellish life, and he's becoming astounded. He's becoming uh, overwhelmed with concern how much the living entity has to suffer. And then, of course, as you go to the end of this chapter and you begin the first few verses from the next chapter, you'll start to See how Maharaj Pariksit starts to say, well, is there any way they can be free from the reactions of this? Is there any prasjitya? 
is it what is the what is the atonement for such activities and then that opens up the whole topic of the sixth canto which is really one of the most interesting explanations of the process of devotional service um, and so not be fooled with it. one cannot flaunt the material energy and think they will not get a reaction. Therefore, one has to follow very strictly, and following strictly becomes easy if one adheres, especially the most important instruction of the spiritual masters to chant 16 rounds on beads every day without fail. Uh, Srila Prabhupada has given that statement as his most important instruction. That this is what is required in order to uh, please and the spiritual master and to move forward in devotional service. I, I personally know many devotees who don't follow their vows after taking the initiation. It's sad to see, but they're only hurting themselves. And they're also making it difficult for other devotees. And at the same time, they're also making it very painful for their spiritual master. How many times Srila Prabhupada has written and talked about begging his disciples to very carefully follow these instructions. He said, if you just do that, chant 16 rounds and follow these four restrictions, he said, at the end of life, you can go back to Godhead. That's how merciful Shaitanya Mahaprabhu is. And that mercy manifestation has come, come in the form of Srila Prabhupada. So, um, yeah, so we get an idea here. But this urge to enjoy the senses is so strong that even people who know what, they're, what they want to do is wrong, they still do it. We have the example of Dhritarashtra. Dhritarashtra was so attached to his sons that he knew his sons were wrong. He knew Krishna was right. He knew his sons were avaricious. But because he was attached on the bodily platform, he even admitted it, he could not uh, he could not do otherwise. And there's many examples you'll see in the material world. People are warned about smoking cigarettes. On the package itself, uh, the uh, statements have become more and more uh, stronger to warn people how dangerous it is to smoke cigarettes. It's, it's interesting because when cigarettes first came out back in the 1940s as a uh, social thing to do it became very popular right right at the end of world war one uh, world war two or just you know, during that time and doctors and people in uh, entertainment were glorifying smoking cigarettes <laughs> now but now they have come to the understanding been forced to come to the understanding that smoking cigarettes is so dangerous to your health that on the package it says uh, it causes death. <laughs> it writes that on the package, if you smoke, you can die. <laughs> and um, this is not some scare tactic. Um, I had a very, I have a very good doctor friend who is a devotee. And I asked him, what is the uh, number one cause of cancer? There are so many kinds of cancer in the world. And he said the number one cause of in one of the kind of cancer is cancer coming from uh, lung cancer caused by smoking cigarettes and tobacco, you know, pipes and cigars, things like that. So people know, they read the package, they hear from others, they see people dying, 
but they still do it. <laughs> uh, Baba says, Nai Chung. He uses the word Nai Chung. It's a very powerful word is that I know it's wrong, but I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> and not considering the results, but material energy is shown how it works in these in this particular chapter how severely the living entity gets punished not even not only during the time that you're performing the activity but after death they get a whole series of punishments under the hands of yamaraj whose business is to give them the results of their activities and then prepare them for their next body so um, yeah well these descriptions are quite uh, vivid and uh, Prabhupada says whether you believe them or not <laughs> the laws of nature are working <laughs> now this is the laws of the nature is very strong the compassionate aspect of nature doesn't exist nature doesn't carry a compassionate aspect it carries its righteousness and its punishment those who follow the laws of god benefit and glorify and become happy and prosperous healthy those who break the laws and suffer and they get reactions and they have to undergo severe types of punishment the mercy manifestation is krishna himself in the form of a spiritual master which can save one from the reactions of material energy and one has to seriously and regularly take shelter of the instructions of the spiritual master. Focus on them as one's modus operandi, right? means of operation, and one will be free from the reactions of sinful activities. And uh, therefore, one will be happy because sinful activities causes distress, causes suffering both physically mentally and ultimately it blocks one's spiritual progress so yeah but here the sex urge is so strong that any kind of discrimination is simply thrown to the wind because people become just like we mentioned the example with cigarettes the alcohol is the same thing. They have they have created clubs nowadays or groups for for curing people of addictions. They have what is called uh, smokers anonymous, alcoholics anonymous, sex anonymous too. There are people who are so addicted to sex life that they can't stop. You see in some places they have um, movies, pornographic shops, various types of entertainment that goes on, illustrating sex life in so many different ways. It's such an attachment for some people that they become neurotic and can't give it up. And therefore there are so many crimes connected with this uh, sex desire. But it has to be regulated by the process of uh, Krishna consciousness and uh, geared simply for procreation of children in a godly atmosphere. And then one can facilitate that desire in a, as, as Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, I am that sex life which is not contrary to religious principles kamos me varatasava krishna says kamos me varatasava i am sex life which is not contrary to religious principles that means for, only for the procreation of children and then one can live a happy and peaceful life with family and uh, produce nice krishna conscious children who can uh, grow up and become a credit to the world by becoming great devotees and the devotees of the Lord, like that. If one engages in illicit sex life, 
And what happens is one will uh, bring in the soul if there is some conception due to that sex life that elicits a particular type of soul will come from a lower planet into the womb of that mother. And then that, that child will be very, very sinful. And they'll start off life in that sinful way. And sometimes we see even young children, especially nowadays, they're wild. They're, they're like, you know, hell on wheels. We have so many examples of, especially in the United States of America, well, children will go into schools with automatic rifles and just annihilate half their class along with the teachers. These are kids for no reason. They become like you know, vicious because this is all due to illicit sex life. Because when one doesn't follow the rules, they bring in these souls from lower places and these souls are born and they're born with a lot of anger. And then we see the kids nowadays uh, so unruly and then, you know, and so many, so much juvenile crime. It's like in the UK alone, in the United, United Kingdom, uh, it's one statistic shows that by the age of 11 years old, then these, these children will have tried everything illicit sex, intoxication, and all kinds of other sinful activity. At the average age will be about 11 years old. So uh, we have created this hellish this society, and it's becoming more hellish. <laughs> and people wonder why there's so much crime, so much suffering, so much... Uh, and the politicians think, well, we just have to adjust the economics. We have to adjust the social systems. We have to adjust the political systems. And then we have no, it's the morality, which is the cause of uh, destruction of the character of the, of the individual along with society. So when morality is thrown out the window in order for wanton enjoyment, especially centered around sex life, then the whole society goes to hell. Women are not protected. And Prabhupada said women can't even walk the streets at night in many of the big cities around the world. Although there are police forces and there are other forms of you know, protection, nothing works because these... Uh, Criminals, they stalk out innocent women and, uh, and, and they perform their sinful activities. So the jails are full. You know, we do jail preaching. Some of the jails are becoming so full that they have, they are, they're creating more jails in order to house all the, the criminals in society. These are the ones that get caught, of course. The ones, there's many who don't get caught, who continue their sinful life, protected by their own, uh, what do we say, uh, financial status. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So, uh, these four principles no illicit sex, no intoxication, no meat eating, no gambling. My, these are the foundation of a godly society, of a, of a moral society, of a, of a happy human being. So I learned to be very careful to follow these very carefully and according to how they are understood. One cannot create their own ideas and say, well, this is the laws I follow. No. <laughs> The scriptures are meant for the human form of life. And if we follow them very carefully, we will grow both spiritually and become prosperous, even on the material level. Okay, so, Hare Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj, for the wonderful, wonderful class. Thank you again for reinforcing all the four regulative principles. 
Now, Maharaj, you are very right. I have also seen um, certain devotees after initiation, and uh, jokingly, they would say they are following three and a half regulation, close to four or something. Now, what happens? I mean, they are initiated. Uh, so what happened to their spiritual master and these devotees? I mean, are they able, is the spiritual master of such devotees able to go back to Godhead? Or uh, do this, yeah. They have to. Of course, there's chances to change. If you break, yes. you can again come to the standard by giving up the activity. And again, following very strictly. But if you don't, you just continue to go down. And you can, obviously, you won't be able to go to back to Godhead because back to Godhead is a place for people who are developed love with God not love for this material world. So what happened to these people, Prabhuji, is, is their desire, like as you see, we see on the cigarette thing, it's written, it will kill. I mean, these are educated, intellectual people, despite they do it. Is it their strong fascination from many, many lives that they cannot give up despite everything? Well, sinful activities have, just like when you plant a seed in the ground, but you don't see the plant growing until it reaches the surface of the ground, then you can see it growing. But it starts to grow when you start putting the seed in the ground, so it's growing underground. So when we commit a particular activity, we plant a karmic seed, mm. and that karmic seed grows, and it starts to develop, and then it fructifies into a reaction. Um, and so a lot of these uh, seeds that we plant have very deep roots. Although we may somehow or other stop uh, for a while, unless we pull it out at the root. And this is what you know, this is the whole uh, discussion that will come up in the beginning of the next chapter. That simple, simply by atoning for sinful activities, doesn't mean you get rid of the desire for sinful activities. Mm. Just like when you when people commit crimes, they go to jail. But the statistics show that people who, I, I forgot the term analogy they use, uh, people who revisit the jails after it, it's, there's a particular word. Maybe somebody knows that way. Uh, they return and, and Almost 70% of the people who commit crimes, get out of jail, return to jail again. Why? Because the sinful desire is still in the heart. Punishment doesn't relieve the desire. Punishment doesn't correct people's activities. What corrects it is they have to get rid of that desire by replacing it with a spiritual desire or a pious desire, okay? So, um, yeah, that's why- What is the three end of, Madhya, what is the three end of means? What three end of means? I couldn't huh? understand. Instead of following four regulations, Madhya said three and half followed. What is three and half? No clarity on that. A, that's, a just, that's just a joking way. It's, it's just a joke, that's all it is. Mm. No, they, I, I meant like it should be strictly for, like strictly eat prasadam, but sometimes people are traveling and they will eat here, their restaurants. So it's not exactly for, it ends up like following three and a half regulative principles. So there's mm. nothing like three and a half. I was just asking Maharaj the question. Mm. It's just a euphemism. Okay. It doesn't really have any, somebody made up that idea three and a half. <laughs> yeah. So... That's fine. But devotees, thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much. As you rightly nice said, class. we have to replace the desire. Otherwise, if the seed of desire is there, it's very difficult. From outside me, it might look like we have gotten rid of it, but inside we crave. So you, yes. yeah, You'll get this next, uh, Sukadeva Goswami will definitely get really deep into this particular discussion in the beginning of the sixth canto, which is coming up. Because Mars Pariksit is overwhelmed with uh, compassion for people who are suffering. He's hearing about how bad they're suffering. 
what what can they do to get relief? And then um, the whole discussion. One of the verses that is you can't you can't purify a wine stained bottle by wine. In other words, uh, if you put a bottle, if you put a uh, a uh, you put wine in the bottle and then you dump it out, the odor of the wine stays within the bottle. So you have to have something really powerful to get rid of that. And that has to be devotional service. Yes. Only devotional service can uproot these deep-rooted desires that situ situate within the heart and are hidden from one's visible uh, awareness. We don't even know how contaminated we are. <laughs> we think we're so we think we're so such a nice person. <laughs> I'm sure everybody out there is nice to other people. But there if you, when you you're put into a different situation, you'll see your how how nice you are. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> when you uh, so yeah, so, so uh, these deep-rooted desires are not seen, but they're there, and they will manifest. And if we don't pull out the roots, the the gross forms of these sinful activities will again return. <laughs> Just like if you don't pull out the uh, the root of a weed. <laughs> And the weed will again grow back. Thank you, Maharaj. Uh, yes, devotees, please go ahead and um, unmute yourself. I have Pooja Mataji. Mataji, would you like to go ahead and pose your question? And you can also turn your videos on, everybody. Pooja Mataji, we cannot, you, ha you have muted yourself, Mata. Hare Krishna Maharaj Pranam. Hare Krishna. Please accept my humble obeisance into your lotus feet, uh, Guru Maharaj. First of all, I just, uh, uh, first of all uh, Maharaj, I just uh, want to uh, correct myself if I am wrong. I used to uh, recite Damodar Ashtakami each and every time while doing cooking or walking or uh, I mean uh, most of the time I used to recite the Mother Ashtakam. One devotee asked me uh, Maharaj some, uh, before some time that it's an offense because if you recite the Mother Ashtakam na, then you have to keep a uh, uh, lamp with you always. <laughs> <laughs> People speculate. So, uh, I, I replied him that. No, no, uh, you, you keep yeah, singing I, that Madarashtika anytime, and you can do it in your sleep. You can do it walking. You can do it cooking. You can do it anytime. The words are for prayers. Prayers can be recited. I mean, there is an appropriate time that is also there, which is set up as part of, as part of the puja. But well, we see that devotees, after the one month of Damodar, they become so attached to that prayer, and so nice, so sweet, so loving, so devotional, that they want to sing it more. Sing it as much as you can. <laughs> it's wonderful. What, what, we're told, what, we're, what we're told to you that, uh, just tell them to go back and read their books again. <laughs> uh, Maharaj, I replied him that uh, the lamp is in my heart and I, uh, I mean, uh, I, I assume that I have a lamp in my hand and I used to recite each and every time. Na? So it's a, it's a, I mean, I'm very much connected with Damodar Swarup, Krishna's Damodar Swarup. So, it's my fantasy that I always recite some other Ashtakam. It's my yeah. become a hobby, hobby, hobby kind, kind yeah, of hobby. Yeah. 
That's your that's your ISTA day. Yeah. So who can tell you what what when, when you should worship and when you should not worship? Yeah. So those great people don't they don't know anything. <laughs> Hare Krishna, Maharaj and Vatrana. Hare Hare. Namam Muzi, Namam is Param Sachit Anandarupam, Latsa Kundalam Goku, E Brajamanam, Jasoda the Oluka Bavanam, Param is the Yankyat. The Drishya Kyogopya Uram Tam Mohor Netra Yudnam Rijantam Karam Boja Yudme Nasata Pinetan Mohu Swasakam Pati Rekanta Kanta Stita Dagodamo Daram Bhakti Badam. So I guess, I guess I'm a bad boy. I just recited it without a lamp. <laughs> yeah, very nice. That was very nice singing, Maharaj. We are yes. missing your kirtans. Very nice. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, Damodar. Okay. I have a... Uh... Prahlad Prabhu, would you like to go ahead and pose your question? Uh, thank you very much, Mataji. Danwan Pran Maharaj. And uh, I just want to confess myself that you said there are so many people you know that they have fallen down. I'm one of them. And sometimes I take solace in, in Srimad Bhagavatam where it says, Chaktva Sadharmam Charanam Bhujam Hare Bhajanda Pakvata Patet Tatu Yadi Yatrakwa Abhadra Mutra Krishna Mutra Kim Plus, Bhagavan Krishna has also said in sixth chapter, Yoga Chalit Manasaha. So, in my history also, I have fallen so many times, but I have never left Rupa's shelter and continued chanting 16 rounds like that. But that does happen in my life and maybe in others' life also. But I just believe that Lord Krishna will protect me, give me further sadhu association and eventually take me out that's what Prabhupada i said Prabhupada said it's third class to fall down it's first class to get back up <laughs> so when we fall i mean this material world is designed for us to fall that's the way it is so when we see that we should take shelter of the holy name pray to the lord for forgiveness and get reestablished in our devotional activity. But what prevents us from falling down is good association. Mm -hmm. and if we keep good association with devotees, strong association, that's the, that will give us the support, the inspiration to continue on without any deviations. And that's why association with devotees is the foundation for success and in the execution of Krishna consciousness. Thank you very much, Maharaj. Hare go. Done well. Hare go. Hare Krishna. My obeisances. I see somebody had raised their hand for a long time, but I don't see your name. Mataji or Prabhuji, would you like to unmute yourself and That's pose your question? Sukhava. Oh, there. Now I see you. <laughs> yes, uh, Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Done with Pranam. Maharaj, you say like, uh, you know, that the the four offense you know no only six and no sorry four uh, rooms no only six and no gambling no weight eating no so maras you know like we like a, you know we go non devotees you know so many you know material desires come in our heart so you know like a, how we can, like a, we we go like out you know market and so many places so how we like you know control these things because we not we can't we can't like associate all the all the time devotees well the strength that you need to withstand the temptations and the distractions 
because maya will just distract our attention away from Krishna. The strength you come is these are 16 rounds. If you keep very regular, early, chant your 16 rounds early, and then very carefully offer your food and devotion and read the books every day. In other words, if your sadhana is regular and it's good, you will not be affected so much <coughs> by what goes on around you in a negative way. Yeah. And the, the other time, if we find ourselves being affected, immediately call out to Krishna for help. Krishna, save me. Krishna, bring me back to your lotus feet. Mm. We can, you know, if we feel like we're being weakened or pulled by the external energy, we should just note that. Don't allow it to happen. And then take shelter of Krishna and Krishna will be there to protect you. Krishna says, I protect everyone according to how much they come to me for shelter. Those who fully surrender to Krishna, he gives them 100% protection. Those who surrender 90%, he gives them 90%. Because the, the lack that we don't surrender, we are taking shelter of something in the material world. And therefore, Krishna will, will not interfere with that. He gives us our choice. But when we understand there's no shelter in this world except Krishna. And that shelter comes in the form of Krishna's holy name. So remember Krishna as much as possible and keep good sadhana. Mm. And it's very unlikely you'll be affected by the external environment. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. Madhavi, Mataji, did you have any questions? Prabhu, you are muted. Sorry, Hare Krishna. No, that's okay. It's better. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Obinson sits to your lotus feet, all goes to Srila Prabhupada. Okay. Um, my question is regarding uh, uh, the time of initiation, Guru takes uh, disciples' karma. Now I'm a little bit confused. So I read uh, what Jai Pataka Maharaj says here, and then we discuss. He says, last but not least, I am taking your karma at the time of initiation. And if you don't avoid these 10 offenses and don't avoid breaking the principles, then I suffer. Prabhupada used to call these uh, non-conformist disciples, means a Guru Drohi, which means the killer of the Guru. I want to help you, so please avoid breaking the principles. So the, my question is, Guru takes karma, time of, uh, time of initiation, disciples' karma, uh, past karma, and then future karma as well, because according to this, Maharaj says, if you don't uh, fo follow this, or if you don't avoid this, then I suffer. Yeah, you have your choice. S surrender means at moment to moment. Although you make a vow to surrender and follow these principles at initiation, it's that then you don't just stop there. That means ongoing every minute. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati gives an elaborate explanation that initiation is an ongoing process. It's not just the formal ceremony that happens once and then you're initiated and you're okay. No. Okay. You just you just set up the contract at that time. Now you have to follow the contract. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, my understanding is that after the initiation, when a disciple makes uh, offenses and don't uh, breaks these uh, rules and regulations, uh, I mean, 
what has they promised the Guru. Uh, they do suffer if uh, they make sinful activities or break these rules, but does the Guru suffer the same? That's the question is coming up for me. There's two uh, verses that Prabhupada okay. comments in the in one in the eighth canto and one in the ninth canto that due to the sinful activities of the disciples, the, the spiritual master will have to see bad dreams. That's one. And the other one too is that the spiritual master will undergo some sickness. So you see a lot of our senior uh, yeah. devotees get sick. Why? Because of sinful activities of the, the disciples. Yeah, so... Um, yeah, that's the suffering. Spiritual master doesn't fall down because he's fixed in his spiritual life, but he has to undergo some mental or physical difficulties because he's carrying a sinful disciple. Therefore, it says that if a spiritual master carries a sinful disciple, then after some time, they both go to hell. That's also in the scriptures. But then again, when we talk about it, Prabhupada was very compassionate that he, even though people were sinful, he gave them many chances to come back. But at the same time, always encouraged them to come back to the standard too and give up, you know. So when we take our initiation vows, these are not promises. A promise sometimes is is allowed to be broken under circumstance, but a vow can never be broken. A vow is like an iron fisted promise that it cannot be broken under any circumstance. So there's no reason why one should again take up sinful activities. <laughs> that means they're not following the process. The process will protect you. Good sadhana, nice association. Follow. If you don't, you if you are being victimized by these sinful activities, and you're not taking association with senior devotees, going to the programs, or chanting your rounds, what can you expect? <laughs> you will fall down. You will commit sinful activity. Maya is very strong. <clears throat> And Prabhupada also warned us. He said, he said, he, he said this specifically. He said, the problem with your Western disciples is that you don't fear Maya enough. So one has to develop a healthy fear of Maya. Just like if you are if you're walking across an icy sidewalk, you have to be really careful because you might slip and fall and hurt yourself bad. So you take caught, you take precautions. When you're crossing a busy intersection with a lot of traffic, you take precautions. Mm. So yeah, so we take precautions a lot and different things we do. So you have to be very cautious not to again get caught by the material energy. And that means stay in connection with Krishna. Don't forget Krishna. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. It's more clarified now. Thank you, Maharaj. Uh, we have some wonderful um, reflection. One of them is from Vrishpa Prabhuji. He writes, Hare Krishna, dear Gurudev, great points. Because of the sinful souls coming to earth, the whole world is very sinful. And it is no wonder that the whole world is going to a big world cleaning. I was thinking, no matter how degraded the souls are, because of the Hare Krishna movement, they can make, make their life perfect. Wonderful comment, Prabhu. That's true, yeah. If there wasn't the Hare Krishna movement, you would, you would be, this, this, this Earth planet would be in Patala Loka right now. <laughs> <laughs> 
I have um, some reflection from Devanand um, Pandit Prabhuji. He says, Hare Krishna Maharaj, all glories to Srila Prabhupada, dear Guru Maharaja, please accept my humble obeisances. Please allow me to share my personal realization regarding the issue, issue of Damodarashtak. The year before last on Karthik, we along with several devotees joined in a Viber group to chant extra rounds every day for the spiritual well-being of one of the devotees and we still keep this vow which we made in the month of Karthik with great enthusiasm. Damodar Ashtak is also my favorite bhajan which I listen to often and with great pleasure. Your servant Divanand Pandit Prabhu. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Bye. Very nice. Devotees, if anybody would like to share your realization, any comments or any questions, Maharaj is still here with us. Please go ahead. Unmute yourself and don't hesitate to ask your question. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All go to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you so much for the very enlightening class and very eye opening. Uh, nowadays, you know, the society is going in which direction we don't know. Even in India, <laughs> India is like, you know, fallen so much. Uh, the people like, you know, they think uh, uh, we, uh, we became modern and they eat meat and intoxication and they don't mind doing this. They feel it's okay like that. Before so, they used to hide it. Now they do it openly. Openly, yeah. And girls, they wear clothes, like Western clothes. It's very common. Um, you used Prabhupada to wear... Was, Prabhupada tells about, even like in India, people won't commit the, the sinful activities of eating meat in public, but they'll go to a restaurant just to try it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But nowadays, then there's beef shops are opening up and places of uh, you know, alcohol and illicit. They're following the West completely. And the West is, is the society in the West is crumbling. It's a, you can't, there's so much crime in the West that you, everywhere you go, you're victimized by the atmosphere. Yeah, but one good thing is like Hare Krishna moment is also growing in India. You see, you know, I was there in NVCC, Pune, and a lot of, lot of people are coming every day and visiting temples. It's really great. Nice experience. Yeah. yeah. The Lord Chaitanya's movement is growing and the demons are also growing side yeah. by side. <laughs> <laughs> The dichotomy is becoming clearer and clearer. The middle road where people were somewhat pious or somewhat combination of pious and impious is now being reduced and people are moving either towards spirituality and better, better higher material principles or they're going following the demoniac ways. Yeah, so there will be a, a crisis coming up. I mean, it's already happening. And uh, I don't want to be a doomsday prophet, but hang on for the next couple of years. You're going to see some really heavy times. <laughs> so unless we get real serious in our Krishna consciousness, the Papa said we're going to be victimized also by it. Don't think that now because things got a little better for a while, it's going to get better. Forget that. That's This is just an interim period for the next stage of oppressions that's coming from different societies. You'll see it. It'll start happening in the, in the fall season. But anyway, Krishna consciousness, that's why we need more association with devotees. We need more programs, more Harinams, more book distributions, preaching. And I'll read something that Prabhupada wrote. 
I mean, he wrote he wrote this. He spoke this in May thirtieth, nineteen sixty six. Listen to this carefully. Whenever there is unwanted population, these three things will naturally occur. By nature's course will appear famine, pestilence, and war, and the population will be finished. There was some, some unwanted population at the time also for which Krishna arranged the war the battlefield of Kurukshetra. If we want very good population, very good generation, then we have to follow the principles of Bhagavad Gita. So, so material nature is cleaning house now, getting rid of the simple population. Yeah. But Maharaj, sometimes devotees are also getting affected by the all these virus and everything. They have they have to protect themselves. That's all. If you're in a if you're a doctor and you're in the hospital trying to treat the patients, if you don't take proper care, you can also get sick like the patients. Yeah. Keep good association and keep good good sadhana. Don't neglect your sadhana because of convenience or because it's inconvenience. That's what will give us the protection. Krishna's holy name and association with devotees. Thank you, Maharaj, for your association. Jai Shamagori. <laughs> you are leading the preaching in North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Having devotees come together every day and discuss Srimad Bhagavatam. Nasta Prayeshu Abhadresha Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhaktivri Uttama Sloke Bhakti Bhavati Nice to Ki. Sutta Goswami explains the importance of regular hearing Srimad Bhagavatam. It's one of the five most important activities in devotional service. There are five Angas which are outstanding. Chanting the holy names of the Lord, worshiping the Lord in his deity form, hearing in Srimad Bhagavatam, associating with devotees, and living in a holy place. These are the five most powerful activities in devotional service. Thank you, Maharaj. Bhagavatam is mentioned there. Bhagavatam, you get everything from Srimad Bhagavatam. Everything you want to know, every, everything you want to um, apply in your Krishna consciousness, everything is there in Bhagavatam. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, Maharaj. So Any... it's, a, it's a great service every day have Srimad Bhagavatam class. Continue to do that. And so many, everybody will be benefited. Mm -hmm. The words of the scriptures, the words of the guru are so powerful that even if you don't understand them, you get benefit <laughs> simply by hearing.
Wonderful, 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 Maharaj. Jai Shamkari Mataji ki jai. Mataji. <laughs> and of How course, did this give you? I was in India, you all are taking care of uh, this uh, Bhakti Sangha so nicely. Thank this you so much. Truly a great platform to bring all the devotees every morning. This is a great service. Thanks to all the Matajis. And of course, Maharaj, for your very, very valuable association. Mm -hmm. Hope we'll be able to take some of your mercy and apply in our life with its actions. Maharaj, Maharaj has yes, Maharaj. mercy upon us. <laughs> yes, for that sure. Very, Maharaj, you've been consistently coming in spite of all your uh, busy schedules and so many responsibilities. So we are very thankful to you for your association. That's very, very elevating. Any Prabhupada, last minute question for Maharaj? Prabhupada has, Prabhupada has given us a treasure house. Yes. We have to simply take advantage of it and share it. Taking advantage of it means to share it. Uh, last minute, Thank you I so can much, add something. Maharaj. Yes, Prabhuji, please okay. go ahead, Prabhuji. So, despite all our faults and everything, I always remember Lord Krishna says, Neha Bikramana Susti Pratyavayana Vidyate. So, whatever little I have done, Lord Krishna will be merciful and give me more chances. And eventually, he'll take me to his service. That's what I feel. <laughs> Thank you for your message. Thank you. You can't fail if you stay stay in this process. Right. Just continue. Go locate play Madonna Harinam Sankirtan. This is this process is coming from the spiritual world. It's not man-made. <laughs> We miss uh, your enthusiastic uh, dance, Maharaj. Every time we come, we are all sitting and doing kirtan. And there you are, the oldest of all, dancing. And that's, well, if, uh, if everything goes according to plan, I'll be seeing you very soon. <laughs> thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much. We'll see if Krishna allows me to get to Toronto. <laughs> We are praying for that, Maharaj. Okay. Yes, Thank you so much for coming on the call and uh, giving such a valuable information every time you come. It's really uh, amazing class. We get uh, so very much realizations uh, we get from your class and uh, uh, today, especially uh, uh, the Damodar Rashtakum, which you sang, was really a special for us. Thank you so much for that. Uh, and I remember last time, I think a long time before, maybe two, three months before, we chanted together. So that was also really wonderful. Thank you so much, <laughs> Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you for your very sweet words. Thank you. <laughs> Yes, pair of essences to Maharaj, one chakal pataru beshya kripa sindhu